I really feel like it's just pulling something out of thin air. Mm-hmm. I, I really feel like it's that. And when you're talking about trying to be authentic and real, I was, I, it made me think of how I used to have this like saying that I had on a sticky note posted to my wall, which was that you train with craft and you write with emotion. And what I mean by that is, is that if you, if you've ever taken a songwriting course, they like to tell you all the things to make your songwriting better. And it will make your songwriting better because they tell you, you know, for the beginner songwriters, it's like, could you say it creatively? Do it. Don't say, you know, I rode my bike to school. <laughs> you know, mentioned that it was like, you know, your two-wheeled turquoise green freedom machine. I don't know. Right? Like, yeah. do something like that. Use opposites. Like, let's get down by and turn it up. You know, just right. things, opposites. Like, you can, and that will make your songwriting good it'll make it a lot better so i always talk about like there are these tiers and everyone talks about you know you go from like a beginner amateur songwriter who doesn't know all these things and they are literally just writing whatever the heck they want and their songs kind of drift and there's no structure you're like is there a chorus (laughs) your bridge is like a whole other song that got slammed in here you know what i'm talking about (laughs) yep (laughs) i see these all the time i used to judge songwriting competitions okay yeah um so, so like, can you benefit from like being told like all these s- skills, like structure, mm-hmm. rhyming, rhymes, rhyme schemes, have, you know, variation in your pitch and your rhythm and all that kind of stuff, right? Like that's craft. And that'll take you from being like a beginner songwriter to a good songwriter. And people end up being good songwriters and they stay good songwriters and there are very successful, good songwriters who make a lot of money being good songwriters. But I I want to add a category of the great songwriters mm-hmm. who are the songwriters that have trained their craft to the point that when they decide to just write from the heart, these skills just kind of work their these you know techniques just kind of work their way in to the songs that they are writing absolutely i think one of the things that i'm making a connection to here is the idea of putting in your ten thousand hours which the number itself is maybe called into question a little bit but the idea of building up a base having enough practice that you can lean back on your your reflexes now of what has just become, I reflexively know to write this way. I reflexively know to use these rhyme schemes if I want to convey this emotion or progress things in this way. Use this structure if I want to tell a story versus using this one if I want to make something really catchy. Not saying those are mutually exclusive, but making those second nature. So then it just becomes, okay, what, what do I want to say, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly. And I remember going to like a songwriting workshop at one point and the, the guy giving the workshop, he had advice that sound advice in its own right, which was the difference between a beginner songwriter and a good songwriter is that a beginner songwriter writes for themselves and a good songwriter recognizes that they're writing for an audience, Right. That's fine if you're trying to write a song that is relatable, right? But then I'm like, but what about like Taylor Swift, who was only writing about what she is experiencing and the rest of the world absolutely loves that. And I would argue that the reason that they do love that is because it's real and authentic because she's writing about something personal, but she's also a good songwriter and has trained her craft. So even though she's writing about something super personal, it still does resonate with everyone else. Yeah, it almost sounds like a cycle where a beginning songwriter, to add to that saying, a beginning songwriter writes for themselves, then has to learn how to write for others. And once they've learned that skill, then they can return to writing for themselves because they will reflexively be writing for others. It will become a habit of just no, I know it's going to be applicable. I know I can generalize it. Now this is for me too. Exactly. Mm-hmm. That is exactly it. 
Wow. And as a songwriter now, you know, I've I've written the songs that are like, I'm going to choose one theme and every single lyric and song is going to refer to this one theme, you know? Right. Like, I've done that. And now when I write music, I'm like, there are times when I'm looking at something and I'm like, ooh, do I use this really cleverly written line? Or do I use the top line that I originally wrote it with because I feel this? You know what I mean? And I and recently I've had to learn and just kind of feel comfortable and confident about going, maybe I should use the one that I feel versus mm. this really clever line. Yeah. Because this feels like a trick and this feels like I captured it. You know? Right. Yeah. Shit, I have that really gives me some some food for thought. Um because I think it's in a lot of creative disciplines, not just songwriting, but you know, I, this is I think one area where you and I are musically saying the same thing, but we might come at it from different angles because I feel the way about producing as it sounds like you do about songwriting. Where I when I sit down in front of the DAW, I will put sounds together in a way where I'm just kind of pulling an emotion out of the air because that is my instrument, right? It's like you sitting down with a guitar. That's how I sit down and go, okay, That's what am I feeling? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so I think there's one, I think there's something to be said about the authenticity of sitting down with the instrument or the tool that you know best and just letting something come out and going, okay, I'm just going to get my own preconceptions of this out of the way and just let myself right on the page, get the sound down, play the chords that come to hand or come to mind, paint whatever comes to mind, right? There's just a, a stream of consciousness, if you will. And I think that what you're saying about doing and sticking with what feels good or what makes you feel, maybe not what makes you feel good, but whatever evokes an emotion, I think that's really sage advice because so much of what is online is like here's the right way to do it even even with some creative stuff right well here yeah. here's how you have to record or here's how you have to write or here's how you have to edit this that the other thing and there's a place for that and it like we've just talked about it takes you from good or from beginner to good but then mm -hmm. once you've mastered those fundamentals or once you certainly have a, a grasp on them what it sounds like you're saying is there is an additional level that is kind of a return to home, but it's also stepping up and going, okay, now what's the emotion underlying why I'm doing this? I think the whole purpose of any form of art, sound, design, film, painting, dance, like you name it, I think the purpose of it is to make people feel something. And I think that Unfortunately, there, there's actually a great deal of artists who don't recognize that. Mm -hmm. And they're either just going, oh, this makes me feel good, which that's fine. That's fine, right? And then there's the group of people going, I'm going to be famous, which that's its own, that's its own can of worms, sure. right? I think it's the artists who are like, I feel something, and if I can make it so that this evoke that emotion from everyone i think that those are the artists who really have nailed something and found something special hey friends if you liked that clip of the create connected podcast you might like listening to the entire episode using the link on screen <laughs>